The Tobacco Farm Life Museum in Kenley, North Carolina presents another Sharing Our Heritage video for your enjoyment. We're more than just about tobacco. We're all about life in rural North Carolina on a farmstead in the late 1880s to the early and mid-1900s. The farm shop at the Tobacco Farm Life Museum in Kenley, North Carolina is a reproduction of an all-purpose shop that would have been found on a farmstead in rural North Carolina. It would have provided tools and equipment for the farmer to make and repair most types of wood and metal items including garden cultivators, wheels, horse collars, and plows. In addition to being able to do woodworking and blacksmithing, having a metal lathe would have been a big plus that allowed metal turning and threading. Similar to what is shown here, the shop would have had a line shaft to power the lathe and other machines. A line shaft was a way to transmit power from a central source, such as an early electric motor, to each machine in the shop. This was common up until the mid-1900s when individual motors for each machine became available. It consisted of a steel shaft with pulleys and belts for each machine that was supported on hangers with Babbitt bearings. The first step in installing this original line shaft and old electric motor was to build heavy wooden supports on the wall. Installing the line shaft hangers was next. Each weighed about 40 pounds and were about 18 inches high. Next came installing the steel shaft itself. This one was about 15 feet long and 1 and 3 quarter inches in diameter. With the pulleys it weighed close to 200 pounds. Several come-alongs and safety chains were used to lift it up and place it in the hangers that were about 9 feet in the air. The motor weighing about 100 pounds was then lifted and placed on this mount which was also about 9 feet up. Today we'll be working on some of the remaining parts and pieces on the installation of a line shaft here in the farm shop. In the background you may be able to hear the excited voices of some of the kids who are as a school group visiting today. Since the line shaft will be turning when the motor is started, it is desirable and customary to provide a way to turn off the power going to the individual machines connected to the line shaft. Here the belt still needs to be connected and more on that later. This can be accomplished with a tight and loose pulley. Our first project today will be to install a tight and loose pulley on this uh, intermediate shaft that will then drive the low lathe. In a tight and loose pulley setup, one of the pulleys is fixed on the shaft, made tight to it, and the other pulley turns freely. It is loose. When the belt is on the tight pulley, which is the one on the left, the machine runs. When the belt is moved over to the loose pulley, it just spins. And I know one of the questions is going to be, how do you move it? That's coming up later. This intermediate shaft with the tight and loose pulleys is mounted to the back wall using a set of pillow blocks. Note the V-belt pulley at the end of the shaft that will be used to then transmit power down to the counter shaft, which then will be used to power the lathe itself. Our next step is to cut the two and a half inch wide leather belt to the proper length. As you can see with the belt on the left, the end has been cut off. Now we need to replace the clipper links which are used to hold the belts together using the machine on the far left and the clipper links that are still in the packaging next to it. We have cut off about a two and a half inch long piece from the longer section of the clipper links and placed it in the machine. The machine holds it in place so that when we put the belt in, we can use the two arms to push down and clamp the links into the leather belt to hold them in place. We've now placed the belt in the clipper links which are in the machine. The next thing we will do is use the arms to crimp it down so that the links go in the leather belt. The jaws are adjustable, so the first thing we need to do is to get them down so they're just touching. Lock them in place, and then with the cramper, crimp it down, and we can move it up a little bit more, and we crimp it a little more, move it up a little more, crimp it a little more, move it up a little more, crimp it a little more, move it up a little more, and 
crimp it. And at this point, we should be getting real close. We'll keep on going a little bit here to be sure we have got it all the way down. It's looking pretty good. Just kind of walks itself up each time to get it to the right length. Looks like that's about it. Here's the end product. Uh, may have to put it in a vise and do a little bit more crimping, but she should be ready to go and match to the other end. Now that we've got the clipper links on both ends, this is the way it would go together. Take both pieces and they just interlace each other like this and slide in like this. And what we're going to use today is just a common ordinary nail to go right in the middle here, slide through there like that. We've got a perfect joint like this that we can work, and if you want to take it loose, uh, you can just pull the nail back out. Now that the clipper ends are on and the belt's been joined together, we've been able to put it from the line shaft down to the counter shaft down here, intermediate shaft that has our tight and loose pulley on it. So now we're ready to answer that magic question that was out there, how do we move the belt from the tight pulley to the loose pulley? So the answer to the question of how you shift the belt back and forth is you put in place what we call a shifter as you can see here. Here's a side view of it, a little bit better. It's just hard to see back here in the back. Uh, it shows the rod and the mounts and the uh, shifter right there in the middle. It's kind of a U-shaped piece that would go around the belt. And when the belt's moving, that thing is easy to move it back and forth, um, just natural as it can be. One of the last things we want to do before we uh, actually get everything up and running is to put in place a tensioner here, like as you see the, uh, the piece of wood that's down at the bottom there that's at an angle, uh, that will allow us to start the motor without uh, starting the line shaft at the same time. That should not put quite as much load on the motor. Once the motor started and running, uh, we could gradually rotate the arm down, which would move the uh, top of the idler up. And on top of the idler, there's a pulley. And at this point, we put more tension on things and the line shaft should start to move. Well, we finally got her running. Uh, as you can hear, uh, it's got its own unique sound, and uh, anybody that runs one of these things uh, needs to listen to that sound and uh, decide whether they got any problems coming up dealing with uh, oiling or whatever. We need to add another pulley to the line shaft, and I thought you might like to see how the pulley actually comes apart so we don't have to take the whole line shaft down and everything off in order to get another pulley on it. The pulley itself uh, actually comes apart when you take these bolts, which you've already taken loose here, two on this side, and then there's two on the back side that hold it together. When you take those apart, it comes out like this, and you have uh, this bushing that also comes apart. It fits on the shaft that goes back in here, and as you tighten the bolts down, this clamps down on the shaft itself to hold it. Not sure how well this is going to show up, but we've got the top half of the pulley sitting on top of the shaft, and uh, we're going to get ready to add the bottom half here. So how do you move a belt from a loose to a tight pulley to engage the machine? Well, you simply slide the moving belt over with a shifter. Hope you have enjoyed this video. It was a fun project to document. To see the shop and line shaft, plan your visit today. Check with the museum to see when the line shaft will be in operation. Much of the equipment you have seen here has been donated. Here is what the owner of the lathe had to say. The lathe belonged to my grandfather. His barn was set up as a shop and um, his trade was he was a machinist. And he had this lathe in his shop and whenever I went I had kind of free room of his shop. and. I was in junior high at the time taking shop 
myself. So the lathe really interested me. I found a good home for it here at the museum and, um, and I am just really thoroughly impressed. And I couldn't be happier. Um, and I think my grandfather would be extremely happy to find that the lathe that he had has gone to a good, good place. By far, donating to the museum is worth more than any amount of money I could have gotten for it because I knew what it's being used for. Farm Shop has been outfitted by donations from Midwest Tool Collectors Association as part of the Preservation and Education Outreach Focus. To experience firsthand our heritage like this and much more, plan your visit to the Tobacco Farm Life Museum today. School groups, scouts, excursion tours, church and seniors groups, and individuals will all learn from and enjoy your time here. And to find out more, please visit our website, like us on Facebook, or call us. Hope to see you all real soon.